In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join Apostle Joshua Selman of Eternity Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for tonight. Oh, what a privilege. What a privilege. Father, we thank you because you are faithful. We bless your name for this opportunity again to be gathered together and to worship, to learn, to be built, to be established in truth. Lord, we thank you because you are faithful. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to the seat of the Father. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your spirit tonight. Thank you for your leadership. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Walk up to ten people. Give them a big hug. Welcome them tonight. Outside, make sure you participate. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to have everyone around. Hallelujah. Some of you, this is the moment you like when we say hug one another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Very quickly, I'll just perform a function quickly and then we'll get to the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, now, as a few of you might have heard, on Tuesday, one of our dear sisters, um, transited to glory praise the Lord um, she died in a motor accident and um, she was buried this morning praise the Lord our dear one sister Lillian Isa the head of department of um, decorations praise the Lord and um, we followed up with the family we followed up with the members of the department we thank God for one thing because the Bible says precious in the sight of God precious in the sight of God is the departure of his saints we thank God because though a very short time I when I was responding to the leaders I told them that she's gone to be with the one she spent her life serving hallelujah the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Thessalonians verse 4, when you begin to read from verse 13, the apostle says that I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning they that sleep, that ye grieve. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, by extension, want to extend our condolence to different families, those here and those who are following with us, thousands and probably millions of people following with us online, who have at one point or the other experienced the departure of a loved one. It's humanly very 
painful when um, we lose loved ones and at times like that we draw our consolation from the word of God. Hallelujah. While having my retreat in the course of the week, the Lord gave me an instruction to teach us um, a few things that I will be sharing with us. And so I want us to please pay attention in the name of the Lord to what I'm about to teach us. Um, permit me to temporarily suspend the financial series. We'll continue next week so that I can just communicate that which God has put in my spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be teaching tonight on the biblical keys to longevity. Biblical keys to longevity. Please make sure you are writing. It's a very important teaching, especially at this time. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good, you are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good, and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. For the last time now. You are good, Lord. He is good and His mercies are forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. subject of death and the issue of longevity and um, the concept of life has for many years and centuries been a subject of debate and a subject of concern because it's something that seems to happen to the entire human race. Death is something that seems to have um, a power and a force that looks like it cannot be restrained. When it comes upon a person or a family or a territory, it seems to just take them. And human beings have tried to negotiate with death and they found out that you cannot buy long life. You cannot lobby yourself into long life. And so that, that inevitable reality of this system of death has forced mankind to respond in different ways. Others through fear, others through all kinds of mechanisms. And um, particularly for the church, it's been a subject of concern. Is there a formula for long life? Is there a principle? Is there some sort of guarantee? Please pay attention tonight. Can a man actually make a bold claim about longevity? Or are we to just walk and hope that someday death will just come and whenever it comes it can take us this has been a great source of confusion in the body of Christ. There are those who are of the opinion that, um, you know, this is what the Bible says and this and that. And there are others who have all kinds of stories, you know, of well-meaning, loving believers, pastors, ministers of the gospel who have died. And um, in all kinds of things, sicknesses have claimed the lives of people. 
accidents, acts of terrorism, and so on and so forth. And so this, the complexity of death, is something that, in spite of the civilization of mankind and the many centuries of evolution, it's a question that has been at the heart of almost everyone. What is the guarantee that this may not be my last night? What is the guarantee that I can plan for 20 years and successfully execute it? This has led many people, for instance, into being irresponsible because they feel there is no point laboring, going to school, paying the price, getting a job, getting married, having kids, and then dying and leaving people, and so on and so forth. And others have um, come up with all kinds of formula. I can tell you, even for ministers of the gospel, it's been a difficult subject um, to teach congregations because as a minister of the gospel, you are exposed to all the sides of life. You have to attend funerals. You have to comfort families. At the same time, um, you will have to be there at baby, the birth of new ones, dedications, marriages, and all of that. So on one side, you have your members crying at the transition of one. And then on one side, they are celebrating the incoming of another. On one side, there is a divorce happening. On another side, people are celebrating the bliss of marriage. So all of these, these extremities make um, the work of ministry particularly very difficult. Hallelujah. And we must be able to draw strength from the truth of God's word. So tonight, as instructed by the Lord, I want to teach us certain things. I want us to discuss on the subject of longevity to give us hope, courage, and to build faith in us. Say Amen. Before I start, like I said earlier on, let me express my heartfelt condolence to many of us who have at one point or the other experience the demise of a loved one i can tell you this that it is really really very painful there are people who have lost father others mothers others both parents others you know and if i'm to ask every one of us to come and hold the mic and say one or two things many of us may have tear dropping stories tragic memories of things that happen surrounded the death of our loved ones and so on and so forth and um the goal tonight is not to get us emotional. The goal tonight is not to um, create a lot of questions in our mind and create a platform for debate. The goal tonight is an attempt to look from the vista of the Word of God and draw up keys to be able to guide us and to show us like a compass that there is a pathway to longevity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalm 91 verse 16. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. I will trust in you. Trust in you. So let the weak say, I, I am strong in the strength of the Lord. He is your heart. You always fill your heart with songs of deliverance. 
Whenever you are afraid, you should trust in Him. That's what He expects. You should trust in Him. And let the weak say, I am strong. In the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to share a few thoughts. Number one, the first thing I want us to know about let's start from Jeremiah 29. Let's start from there. Jeremiah 29. Let's be fast. There are lots of scriptures we're going to look at because I want to establish a few things. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Are we there? Okay. One to read, everyone is projected. This is the part that I want us to focus on tonight. To give you a what? An expected end. A predictable end. Please listen to me. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. These thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts of good. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any good report, if there be any virtue and, and any praise, he said, think on these things. And so God is saying, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said they are thoughts of good and not of evil. This is God speaking. And those thoughts are particularly designed to give you an expected end. A predictable end. Not an unexpected end. Not an unpredictable end. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The thoughts that I think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Hallelujah. Point number one. The first point I want us to get tonight is that God's desire and plan for us is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. God's desire and God's plan for us, according to scripture, is to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Psalm 91 verse 16, please, very quickly. Write down that point and then we'll look at a few scriptures. God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Psalm 91 verse 16, please. Everyone read. One, two, read. One more time. This is the Bible. This is the truth of God's word. It says, for with long life will I give him did he say, will I give him? That means there is a satisfaction that comes when a man enjoys longevity. Are you getting blessed? It says, for with long life will I satisfy him. And in it, I will show him my salvation. Number two, Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. Please, media, you'll be really fast. You'll help us. There are lots of scriptures to look at. And all of them are important. We're establishing the first point tonight. That it is God's desire and plan for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Exodus 23 verse 26. 23, 26. Hallelujah. Everyone read.
the number of thy days I will fulfill. The number of thy days. There is an appointment with long life. There is an appointment from the throne. From eternity before you came. And it says the number of your days I will fulfill it. So that's the first point I want us to establish tonight. And listen, people, I want you to realize that um, I'm a human being. I understand that many of us are receiving these points with heavy hearts because you are comparing this truth of God's word versus the reality that for some of us have happened in recent times and for all of us as a house having to mourn the transition of our dear one but the Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. A believer is not just one who has given his heart to the Lord. A believer is one who has submitted to the authority of God's word as the final say. Regardless of your experience, this is what makes you a believer. It's, you are not a believer just because you were born again. You are a believer because you have come to a point where you have chosen willfully to allow the word of God take precedence and become the final authority over your life. Say Amen. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? You must realize that you are not just a believer because you got born again and you are going to heaven. You are a believer like a wife who submits to her husband. Even if she does not like the way he's behaving, even if she does not understand her covenant of marriage, her covenant of being with him will force her to submit. Sometimes he may beat her. He may be a foolish man. But she has chosen as a submissive wife that I will submit to his authority and I will bear his son name. That's what it means to be a believer. To be a believer is not to love God when you can explain things. To be a believer is that in the midst of your joy, in the midst of your tears, in the midst of your clarity, in the midst of confusion, regardless of what happens in your life, the word of God stands irrefutable and unarguable in your life. Is God speaking to us? Are we growing as believers? This is a very mature teaching tonight. If you do not come to a point where you exalt the word of God above your life, you will backslide and you will run away from God. That's why we have many atheists today. Many of them were church children. Many of them were folks in Baptist and Presbyterian churches. But their lives were surrounded by so much confusion. And because they think that God has to be boxed to the limitation of their finite minds, after a prolonged period of disappointment, that disappointment builds a mentality and a stronghold that permits the operation of demon spirits. And their conclusion is that God is a liar. And their conclusion is that the Bible is not true. Their conclusion is something is wrong. There is a deceit somewhere. But the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Slow to anger, rich in love, from everlasting to everlasting, he says, Thou art God. Hallelujah. It is God's desire for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest. Do you believe that? Point number two. Make sure you're writing. Point number two. The Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. The Bible did not hide it from us. It didn't leave it as a secret. It's clearly stated in the Bible that it is possible that although this is the desire, it is absolutely possible, supported by Scripture, that a man can die before his time. Open bracket and write this. Especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life. Open bracket and write this. Especially if we do not diligently engage the keys that guarantee long life. This is a very hard teaching for many of us tonight, but it will test your love for God. 
The Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Ecclesiastes 7.17, quickly. Ecclesiastes 7.17 and Psalm 55 verse 23. We'll look at those. Ecclesiastes 7.17. The Bible also teaches us under this point that the life of a man can be added and can be subtracted. Not only can the life be cut short, the Bible shows us that someone's life can be added to and someone's life can be subtracted. 717 Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah. Okay, let's just let's just turn while they're trying to help her. Okay. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read everyone. One to read. Why should thou die before your time? We are still going to revisit this verse. It says, Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou what? Die. It's a question. It's just the, the B part I want us to focus on. Why? It's a question. That means it is a possibility that although these are the provisions, the same way God designed for everyone to be prosperous. The Bible says that, um, how did he put it now? He says, the proceed of the earth is for the profit of all. But there are people today who love God and they are still poor. Is that true? There are people today who love God and cannot afford to feed their children. But it does not stop the fact that God is a loving God and he has shown a formula for prosperity. Why should thou die before your time? So the Bible shows us that it is a possibility that a man can die before his time. Psalm 55 verse 23. 55 verse 23. Are we there? Alright, go ahead and read everyone. Those outside, we apologize. Looks like they are not seeing the projection, but just follow us very carefully. One to read. Shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out what? Half their days. They will not even live up to half their days. Now forget that he's talking about wicked people. I'm just showing you that there is a possibility that life can be added, can be cut short, can be multiplied, can be divided, can be subtracted. This is the infallible word of God. Hallelujah. So although God's desire and plan is for us to live our lives here on earth to the fullest, the Bible shows us clearly that we can die before our time. Point number three. This is a hard one now. Receive grace to receive it. Ready? The Bible re reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. Write it down. The Bible reveals that God is never behind us dying before our time. Isaiah 65 verse 20. Hallelujah You have won the victory Hallelujah You have won it all for me Death could not hold the reason Lord you're seated in majesty
Five verse twenty of Isaiah. Go ahead and read. One to read. Nor an old man that had not what. Go ahead and read. This is the prophet speaking the mind of God to the people of God. He says. There shall be no more infant of days, nor an old man that had not sealed his days. For a child shall die a hundred years old. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says, But as many as believe him, he gave them power to become. As many as believe him, he gave them power to become. Hallelujah. One more scripture. Ezekiel 18 verse 32 Ezekiel Shiva Kataparoto Suprati Go ahead and read One to read Stop For what? One more time One more time This is God speaking One more time Read on Do you believe this? Please, listen, 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 listen. I'm a human being. Are you getting me? I understand the reality. I understand the pain. I, I understand the gravity. Are you getting me? Of, of um, You will only need to be a leader to understand what it means to manage tragic issues in families. And this is consistent. I have been to mortuaries. I have prayed for people. We have lost loved ones in far and near. And all kinds of things have happened. But I choose to be a believer. I choose to be a believer. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing. Praises to your name. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Say it who? Say it, prophet Ezekiel. Sayeth the Lord God, wherefore, as a result of the above, turn yourselves and leave ye. Next point. This is a very serious one, and I want us to pay attention to it. Ready? Satan, comma, the thief is identified from Scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys john 10 10 please satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals kills and destroys 
Write this before we look at the scripture in continuation. He has strategies through which he achieves this mission. Satan the thief is identified from scripture as the one who steals, kills and destroys. He has strategies through which he achieves this mission. Continue writing. Topmost among the strategies are sicknesses, suicides, accidents. Write it down. Topmost among these strategies are sicknesses. You can write afflictions too. Suicide. Accidents. These are his most common strategy of attempting to cut short lives. These are his most common strategies. 95%. 95% of the transitions and the demise of human beings from the earth is as a result of sicknesses and infirmities suicides, accidents of all sorts, fire, all kinds of things, destruction. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief cometh not, meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission. The thief cometh not, meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this, to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus, the Son of the living God, said, I am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The thief, Satan, there are many names that he's given in the Bible. He's given the serpent. He's given the dragon. He's given the thief. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He's called the adversary. He's called the destroyer. And Satan has a strategy. Please let me have your attention now. Satan has a strategy. There is a series by the grace of God on angels that we are going to be teaching subsequently. And under that series of angels, I'm going to be teaching us on the origin of angels and we are going to examine this man or this entity called Satan. Praise the Lord. I want us to look very carefully in that series. There are a few things about Satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser. Do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits, Satan is not the most dangerous? There are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain. They were deliberately not released because the Bible says if they are released, even the elect will not stand. The question is, at what point were they bound and what did they do? Hallelujah. When you begin to read, don't turn there, the book of Ezekiel 28. The Bible begins to speak of an ancient king. We don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels. Look up. Many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels. No. No. The word angel comes from the Greek word angelio. And it means a messenger. Let me tell you a few things. Look up please. When Ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called Lucifer. The Bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man. That was a king over nations and over kingdoms. Is that true? Are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? 
is raises up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre. And says, thou which subdued nations. Talked about the making of Satan. And then he said how that he ruled nations and territories. Inhabitants in the earth. Present at that time. Watch this. Let me just give you a quick analogy. Everyone look up. This is an academic environment, so let me attempt to communicate a few things. I think it's important we get this. Look, look at this. Imagine, for instance, that there was a student when our daddy, prof, was a student. Let's assume, right? That there was a notorious student at that point. During the time of our daddy, when he was in school. Are you getting that point? And that notorious criminal had access to the Senate. Please follow me. A notorious criminal. Are you getting what I'm saying? And because of that, something happened at that time. Watch this. That notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor. Are you getting me now? Because probably he was given the privilege of being an SUG president. And so he had some level of dominance over the students. Are you following what I'm saying now? On the strength of that, he led a rebellion. As at the time he did that, daddy was a student. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now he is long graduated. But that notorious Capone is still lingering around ABU. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now... After so many decades, a new set comes into that same ABU. Are you getting my point? And then you hear that people, there is one notorious criminal that has been here. This guy has been here for a long time. Are you getting what I'm saying? He's an illegal occupant. He's not a student, but he has refused to leave that territory. Watch out for him. He has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students. U61, U62, U60 whatever. Till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of ABU. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That ABU, that's why when you measure it, you find out that you are young, but they tell you ABU is 50 years. Whereas you are just 4 years. Are, are you getting my analogy? Is it making sense to you? When he was the student, he was not the most notorious student. He was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history. There are other notorious students, cultists that were driven away. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university. Now watch this. Let me tell you something. I don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us, but we'll have that series by the grace of God. Did you know that angels were once mortal beings? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth. Their dispensation ended and the ones who are with Christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation. Just like, imagine that Jesus comes now. I hope you know when Jesus comes, our dispensation is ended. But the program of God still proceeds. We do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas. But we know the Bible tells us there is, a, there is an age to come. And there is a power that is left for that age to come. And by reason of alignment, we can taste of that power. What age, we do not know. The word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. So I guarantee you, we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization, but not the last as far as creation, as far as, as advancement as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know. Who knows? Maybe in another dispensation we will be sent 
to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of God if allowed. And we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of God in that dispensation. They will call us angels. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Now watch this. When we get to heaven, there will not, the Bible does not record. The concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven. Is that true? So, if in the earth, in my earth life, for instance, this was my wife, these were our children. When we get to heaven, we all become brothers and sisters. Are you getting what I'm saying? We all become brothers and sisters. I can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants. And they can look at me and say, wow, who is this strange being? But they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life. It is this aberration that was, that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation. This is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said, forget the people you are seeing now, they have been before. Listen, the dispensation before our own there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them. There was nothing called invisible and visible. That concept did not exist. Are you getting my point? The dispensations before us, you could access the heavens and access the earth. Now, it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning. So, Adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation. We never had the opportunity to see what we could do. For instance, there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction. They recorded rulership and they recorded... Who knows if Adam did not fall and Eve would have had the opportunity because he still would have given birth. You understand? He would have given birth in his perfected state. We would have seen the son of Adam. A womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature. That's why in all of the dispensations, it's only our dispensation that brought Jesus, the Son of the living God, to come and die. Please, let's continue. That's for another time. I'm just trying to show you that the one you call Satan, Lucifer, he was once a king in a dispensation. The king of fire. That ruled upon nations. That's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be. Are you getting me now? Those spirits together with Satan were the brains behind the building of the Tower of Babel. They were attempting to bring back a dispensation. To create a rebellion that once was. That was why Solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Geography today. Geography. They have found castles. Thousands of meters under the earth. They have found ancient castles. Did you know that there was a dispensation where where we are standing now was water, not land? The same way that place, where is the Mount of Ararat? Where the the ark of Noah rested. Where is it in the earth today? We know Everest to be the highest. Where is Mount Ararat? Where are the golds? Where is the temple of Solomon that was built with pure gold? 
you mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find dust of gold let me tell you most of them are still intact they are buried in the sea because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the hebrew word tohu wa bohu is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments i'm saying all of this to let you know that satan has a history the strength of satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits the strength of satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit Are we blessed? Very quickly. Keys to long life. The first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest. They all complement themselves. You don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go. No. There are keys. There are keys. Number one, the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking, choosing, releasing words of life. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. And then we'll look at Proverbs 18, verse 21. Psalms 34, 12 to 14, and then Proverbs 18, verse 1. The first key to long life is to speak it. The first key to long life is to choose it. The first key to long life is to release it. Hallelujah. Ready? Look up. Let's read Psalm 34 verse 12. One to read. What man is he that desireth what? Life. And loveth what? Many days that he may see good. Read on. Keep what? There is a relationship. Stop between your tongue its communication and your life the bible says who is it that desire long life it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what speaking guile 14 depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the emphasis is 12 and 13 who is he koinonia that desires long life i don't die oh the Bible says, who is he that desires long life? Don't just laugh about what I'm saying. Because whether you think you are joking or not, the Bible says, and let it not be said before an angel, I made a mistake. Who is he that wants to activate longevity? It says, keep the... Please go to verse 13. 13, 13, 13. It says, keep thy tongue from what and your lips keep your tongue i know many of you have said kai people are beg they're exaggerating why do you want to speak please be real you be real in the earth way you will die like a chicken your reality must be the word he says i am the way i am reality i am absolute reality Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21. Can we read Proverbs 18, verse 21? One to read. What will they eat? The fruit of what? No, 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 no. It's in your Bible. It says, they that love it shall do what? 
death and life. This is Solomon, a man who received wisdom from God. He's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to. And he said, in my exploration of spiritual mysteries, I found something. Death and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit there. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? The Bible says, I set before you this day blessing and cursing. Is that true? Death and life. Here's my suggestion. I can't force you, but this is my suggestion. Choose life that you may live. Not wish it. Choose life. Koinonia. Choose life that you may live. Are you still a believer? Choose life that you may live. Choose life. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you death and life. But this is my advice for you. Choose life. I speak life. Oh my brother. I speak life and another day you will prevail. I speak life. Don't give up the fight for your life. Hallelujah. Everybody say after me, I choose life. Outside, can you shout it? I choose life. Those standing at the back, the back there, can you say, I choose life? Don't let the devil tell you, I hope you know what you are saying. Say it. I choose life. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Conquer fear. I choose life. When you speak, you release it. This is a voice activated planet. Nothing happens until sound is released. I choose life. Send it to the atmosphere. I choose life. Send it ahead of your tomorrow. I choose life. The will of man cannot be compromised. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus said, Behold, I, Jesus, the King of kings, the creator of the ends of the earth, I stand at the door of your heart and I keep knocking. I cannot enter until your will permits me. As mighty as Jesus is, he respects the will of man. How much more Satan? Jesus, the son of the living God, the resurrected Christ, the eternal one, stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking. For 60 years, if that man refuses, he goes to hell. But he was knocking. So what do you think makes you think that Satan just steps into your heart is called deception. This is the foundation of witchcraft. It paints a picture that is not real. It makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to have wreck havoc in your life. Say it again, I choose life. Say it again, I choose life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? You say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt. And say, did they speak like that? Say, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I choose life. Hallelujah. 
Are you blessed tonight? Write very quickly, everybody. Key number two to longevity. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Biblical key number two to longevity. Under the word fear, write reverence. Reverence. The fear, open bracket, reverence of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 27. Proverbs 10, 27. Proverbs 10, 27. Everyone read. One, two, read. The fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence for God. Respect for Him. Honor for Him and His ways and what He represents prolongs days. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The Bible says the fear of the Lord. There are two indexes given in the Bible to measure the fear of the Lord in a man's life. Number one, obedience to His commands and number two, service in the house of God. Obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the Lord. Obedience. Obedience. Oh, I love him. I obey him. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 to 11. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you. You are everything to me and I exalt your holy name I exalt your holy name I exalt your holy name on high the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Verse 11. For by me, days shall be what? And the years of thy life shall be increased. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah. He said, go and tell Hezekiah. You will not recover from that sickness. You will die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said, Oh Lord, remember how I have walked diligently before you. And the Lord sent Isaiah again. He said, uh, 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 uh. I remember my faithfulness. And he went back and said, The Lord said, I have added for by me Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied and the years of his life shall be increased. Obedience and service. When we talk to people about obeying the principles of God, many people think that I can live my life the way I want. Longevity, brothers and sisters, hear me, don't let westernization deceive you. Longevity is tied to your fear of God. Service. There are so many people seated here inside and outside. You're not serving in any unit. You're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture there. You will live to declare. You will live to promote. You will live to frontier his kingdom. Let me tell you this. My passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives. It's to create a sense. My passion is to institutionalize God consciousness in people. To make it an institution. That everything in your life, brothers and sisters, is secondary.
to the pursuit of his agenda. I don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not. I can tell you an assignment. Start serving diligently in the house of God. Don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of God are just weak people who are desperate for husband. Say, Kai, you serve. Eh? The way you are behaving, don't let anyone cheat you. There are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself. Hallelujah. When five minutes without your breath, you are gone. It doesn't matter what your agenda is. It's over. The greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving God. That's how you cheat death. That's how you cheat the grave. That's how you cheat death. You don't cheat death by being afraid of it. You cheat death by serving God. Victorious in life and victorious in death. Paul says, for, for me to live is Christ. And if I die, it is still gain. There is no loss. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, the Lord is speaking to you. You are living your life as young as you are. You think you are too busy. There are many of you outside. As you are looking at my face, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight. I'm saying you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to. When will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life? Say, I'm not a man of God, I'm a pilot, so what? That my life be offered, oh God, on the altar of sacrifice. That I will serve you. I told God, this is all I do with my life. I don't have plan B. When I wake up in the morning, your kingdom come, oh God. That's all I do. Are you getting blessed? Service is one of your greatest respects that you can do. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best, with all my life, I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, I'll do my best, I'll do my best for you. Sing it one more time from your heart. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you Lord forever. I'll serve. I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it as though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands. You go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week. And there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God. There, there's no service for the kingdom. It's not part of their lives. They come and they warm the bench. And smile around. And you tell them, are you serving? Any believer that is not serving in a church, not serving in a group, your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom. You don't deserve to live. He says, I shall not die but live. There is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom. God will kill a nation to preserve that man. I travel all the time. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? Tomorrow we are on our way again to be there. All the time. I've seen all varieties of accidents. I've seen all kinds of things. I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations. We have met armed robbers. We were going to, um, when we were going to Obama shop, our flight was cancelled. We had to charter a car to take us by road. We left about 4.30 in the morning. Just coming out of Abuja, Abaji, going towards, just entering the route to go towards Kogi. And we saw somebody reversing, they were armed robbers. 
brothers and sisters, this gentleman speaking to you, I'm not a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm educated. But I want to tell you something. The fear of the Lord can prolong the days of a man. That you spend your life serving God. During the days of our fathers, the popular song is, Lord, here am I. Send me. Right now we are saying, Lord, here am I. Give me. I have come. I have finally arrived to collect. See, let me tell you, don't just laugh. If you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your Christian experience, you will be unfruitful in the kingdom. I want to stand before my maker. I can only imagine what it would be like. Ah, what's the song? You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine that on that day when I stand before Him, when we are finally done and we have conquered the earth, depopulated the kingdom of hell and brought, turned the heart of many to righteousness, that through faith, after we have subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness, we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation. And say, Lord, I am ready. And you appear before him to be absent in the body, the apostle says, is to be present with the Lord. And he looks at you and says, well done. You tried. And they take on that crown. And you see all the Matthias saying, we watched you all the while. While you were in that crusade, we watched you. While you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils. The family in heaven was watching. For some of us, while you were roaming around gossiping, and all that was your passion was, oh God, husband, time is going. God said, we, we were watching you too. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. We were in your life a few weeks ago. And when we went there, the organizer of the, the campus could say, when he met me, I saw the way he was saluting me. And I, said, I was wondering, what was this for? And he called me and he said, Sir, about three years or thereabout, when you came into this campus, I was just a fresh student when I came in. And when you preached, I got born again. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And today I'm still standing and doing many things. Every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people, I say, Lord, thank you. I have no business being known. They don't need to know me that I may decrease. That my faith cannot heal anybody. My picture cannot bless anybody. There is one mightier than I. He's the one I live and I spend my entire life serving. Please, I speak to you as a servant of God tonight. Think about your life. Think seriously about your life. And the way you are ignoring the things of God as though there is something better. I'm not saying be a pastor. Be an addict enough. When was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel? How many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place? How many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God. Not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold possible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are you are my
there is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The psalmist said, better is one day. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm so desperate to serve you. Although I'm a king, I choose to be an usher, a sanctuary keeper, than a celebrity somewhere. These were men who understood God. They understood the ways. There are some of you here, you think you are too big to join the protocol. You are too big to do this. You see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools. Unfortunately, most preachers have preached service, not as a proof of love for God, but as a way to get things from God. It is true that if they obey and serve Him, there are benefits. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Beyond getting things, it is a proof of love. So if your work is to bring this water, you bring it with all sense of honor. Not just like you are worshipping a man. Oh, it's a privilege to serve in the house of God. It's a privilege. If you are to clean the chairs, you are cleaning the chairs and say, Lord, it's a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. You can do without me. You have chosen to do with me. You are supposed to bake the cake. You are seated and you know you have grace. You say, no, I need to join the welfare department. I must spend my life. I, I need to contribute. You are excellent in graphic. Oh, the media needs me. Service. 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 Whether you are in Zaria or not, find a church. Find a group. Find a fellowship. Find a, a congregation of believers. Many of us are looking for Gio and Mama. That's the only condition you have given God to serve Him. Lord, I will serve you if I will be the mama of the ministry. I will serve you if you give me the name of my parish. The name of your parish is nothing. Let it be your passion. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed? I'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit. Because I don't want you to waste your time. Please, get back into the mystery of kingdom service. Get back. You spend your time serving a guy because you love him. You go to his house. You wash his clothes. You cook. You iron. And he says, is it not too much? You say, this is the least I can do for you. Is it to express my love? I'm, I'm, I'm not embarrassed. Call me a fool. It's true. Eh? If loving you is a crime, let me be a criminal. Look at what you are saying. Look at what you are saying. Shame on any believer who is saying that. I'm telling you, I say it again. Shame on any believer. That because of mundane things, you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Skapaka prondo soprosilia baharatu sufratia. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep. My commandments. Verse 2. For length of days. Obedience. Length of days. And long life. Together with peace. Shall they add to thee. Commandments. He that loveth me is he that keeps my commands. John 14, 21. He that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me. And I will love him and my father will love him. And we will come and manifest ourselves to him. The commands of God. His commandments are not burdensome, brothers and sisters. Let's hurry up. Key number three to long life. Engaging the mystery of the blood. Key number three. Let's hurry up. Engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding. Engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding. There are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance. Number one. In the book of Exodus chapter 12. It was used to anoint the doorposts and the lintels 
so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people. Hallelujah. Number two, Jesus revealed it to us in the communion. The communion. In the New Testament, he began to teach us the mystery of the communion. And then number three, the mystery of what the Bible calls blood sprinkling. That the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30. We may not have time to read all, but let's see how far we can go. Help us, media. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Next verse. It says, after the same manner he took the cup, here and there, 25, 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show the Lord's death till he comes. 27. Wherefore, whosoever, now listen, shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily. Open your eyes, I want to show you a mystery. Unworthily. It says, this sacrament, there are two sacraments that Jesus left to the church. One is the sacrament of the communion. The second is the sacrament of baptism. Water baptism. Two of them are still valid. They are important today. He says, Whosoever shall take up the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of what? The body and the blood of the Lord. Here comes the mystery. 28. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what? He can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of Jesus Christ relieves life. And because he's, he's eating it unworthily, he will get the opposite of it. Next verse 30. Read, please. One, two, read. Stop. For what cause? For the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment. For this cause, how many people? How many? How many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them? Have you ever had any death? And they told you that, ah, this death, it was communion that killed the man. Have, is it in your Bible? For this cause, did it say few? Many, many are weak. For this cause, the cause of not discerning the Lord's body, the cause of not respecting it, for this cause of not giving it the honor, it says many are weak. You believe the Bible, right? Many are what? Sick. And many sleep. Wow. For this cause, trivializing the body of Christ, not discerning the power it can release. Not discerning that this represents the body of Jesus. Beaten, battered by whose stripes we are healed. It says for this cause. That means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily. For that cause, you will be strong. You will be healthy and you will live. You will be strong. You will be healthy and you will live. Exodus chapter 12 from verse 7 to 8 the mystery of the blood and then 12 to 13 we are not going there we don't have the time we have to move on to other things I'm just giving you references Exodus chapter 12 7 to 8 and then 12 to 13 and also verse 23 these are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death, the Bible calls it the destroyer. That when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel, it will leave and trouble you not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Key number four, honor to parents. Key number four, 
Let's be fast, please. Honor to parents. Open bracket, both physical and spiritual. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3. Honor to parents, both physical and spiritual, are mystery keys to long life. One to read is projected. One to read. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Verse 3. What's the blessing? That it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long. Where? It told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long. For honoring parents. How many of us have dishonored our parents? Yes, they are foolish. Yes, they've acted stupidly. Yes, they may have behaved in a way. But do you honor them? Some of us beat up our parents. Some of us beat up daddy and mommy. We think I'm a big boy, I'm a big girl, I'm now married, I have children, I'm driving a jeep. Let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father, curse your father or your mother. Let me show you this. Proverbs 20:20. 20, 20. A grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers. Read it please. One to read. His lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth. Now get this. I'm not saying that they lead you to partition. So as, for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation, no matter what it is. Look at me. David twice had the opportunity to kill Saul. Is that true? Are you Bible students? David had the opportunity to kill Saul. He cut his rope and went away with it. He said, I will not be the one to kill God's anointing. How many times have people run their mouths talking about men of God? You sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of God. Just talking and smiling. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Whether spiritual or physical. He said, they that rule well among you deserve double honor. Honor them that rule well. When they have proven a life of integrity. Not human worship. Not fear. But a sense of honor respect. I honor my parents in life and in death. Hallelujah. Some of you have elderly people come around. You can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling. And say, you came late, please. I don't want anything to inconvenience me. You are there shaking your wivon up and down. Instead of you to stand up and say, mama, please, you can sit down. And she say, no, 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 my daughter, insist. Insist say mama sit down it's not about being a virtuous woman it's about life and death life and death it's in your bible I'm not the one saying it it's in your bible say I choose to honor my father and my mother how many of you pray for your men of God how many of you pray for ministers you stand here criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal instead of you to get to the place of prayer you stand there saying i always knew i always suspected the way i've been looking at that man you see that continue the bible says he that cursed his father and his mother his lamp his life will be taken away to obscure darkness how many have died as a result of this honor when a father fights his son he loses his honor when a son fights his father spiritual or physical he loses his life that's why many people sadly to say many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries break out and jeopardize the life of the Jew thinking God called them notice very few of them ever last because he that dishonored his father Are we learning? Number what now? Number five. Walking in wisdom. The fifth key to long life. Walking in wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16. Those outside, if you are still with us, say amen. 
God bless you. Alright, Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16. Walking in wisdom. Walking in wisdom. Foolishness can take a man's life. Foolishness can cut short a man's life. Walking in wisdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says, happy is the man that what? Finds wisdom. That means you have to look for it. And the man that getteth understanding. 14. For the merchandise of it are better than silver. And they gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her. 16. Length of days are in her right hand. And in her left hand riches and honor. If you embrace wisdom, it will also open you up to long life. Look at me. How many people do you know who cannot drive? Hello? They cannot drive. And then they go and carry a truck and kick it. Because they are trying to impress their colleagues. Are you seeing how foolishness cuts short the life of people? And then they go to the road. They have given the spirit of death unrestrained access. How many people drive their cars? Foil is leaking down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Foil is leaking and they don't care. There are people who, who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus. They connect it directly to the carburetor and from the, bo from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running. They are smiling. How many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal. The tire is so it is. It, the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight. That's the degree to which the car is disaligned. And yet he plans to travel to Lagos. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. Are we blessed? A man takes beer, alcohol, and tells you, can I give you a ride? He say, really? You get into the car. Wisdom. You have trusted your life to a foolish man. Are we getting blessed, please? How many things do people do? Go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes. Directly under your bed is one wire that has been there two years. Naked wire. How many people dry their clothes on naked wires? Or at least part of it is beginning to cut. Life wire. They dry their clothes and smile. They have been doing it. I, I know how to do it. No, no, no. I'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives. You plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie. There are many of us, the way you own your car, there is something only you know how to touch. You touch the wires and then something down. You just touch it and it sparks. Gas, gas, and then the thing starts. You've been doing it for many years. Preserved by mercy. You think you are wise. God is speaking to you tonight. How many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground? Sparking. You will see it sparking. And there is foil directly under. Yet we went to school. Is God teaching us wisdom? There are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil. You buy one jerry can of foil. And keep it close. There are babies there. There are all kinds of things. People are inhaling it. There are others you never eat well. I'm showing you how people partner with Satan to destroy their lives. You never eat well. There's no difference from the day God, you were in poverty and now that God is even helping you. There is no difference. Look at mechanics. Look at what they eat. Same thing. One lady comes with with. with with a lele or something and serves them. That's what they eat every day, every night. They take tea in the night. See, that kind of unhealthy, that's why the life expectancy level of Africa is about, is it 30 or 40? Scientifically proven. We're not talking of demons here, we're just talking of carelessness. Say carelessness. Yes. Yes. 
people do all kinds of things. Risky things. And we think there is no problem to it. Very risky things. It's only God that can tell the kind of risks people take every day. Every day. There's food on fire. You made yam. The water is boiling. You want to use your hand to carry it out. Can't you look for a spoon? If the spoon is missing, can't you be patient? Why must you cut you? You came complete. Why must you go back with one hand? Yes, you will make heaven, but is that a rich life? Is that a rich life? Why will you cut short your life? Because of carelessness. It's God speaking to us. Number six. The sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We are getting deeper now. We are getting to the area where we are going to pray. Luke 10, verse 19. Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold! See, don't be ignorant. I give you power to tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over how many? How many? All the powers of the enemy. He says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. I have given you. If you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately, he said, with wise counsel, make war. wise counsel make war. I have given it to you. Death is a spirit. Infirmity is a spirit. Destruction is a spirit. The spirit does not just work by default. When the spirit of death is in an environment, what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity. This is the standard operation. There are a few exemptions, however. But the standard way the spirit of death the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic. A subtopic under point six, the reality of witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft, I just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits. Please listen to what I'm saying because it's very important. The reality of witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12. Let's hurry up. Let's just write the scriptures. Media, copy them down and then you give it to us. Nahum chapter 3 verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23. Proverbs 1 11. And then Psalms 10 verse 8. There are many more but we'll just stop here. Give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. Let's hurry up. Everyone read. Want to read. There shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what? Pass through fire. Or that uses divination or an observer of times, an enchanter or a witch. Next verse. Or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Next verse. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee. God himself identifies that there is a dark side to our world. There are enchanters. There are stargazers. There are men that manipulate the constellation against the destinies of men. The church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of Satan. Nahum chapter 3 verse 4. Just look up so that um, since it's projected. One to read. Because of the multitude of the wardoms 
of the well-favored harlot, the what mistress of witchcraft, that sell what? Look at what she sells. She can see. Look at her goods. The way you sell pure water. The mistress of witchcraft. And say you can come and meet me. And I will give you Africa. I can give you this village. I can sell that soul to you. It's in your Bible. It says she sells what? Nations through her wardom. Her fraternity with human beings. That means human agents come to meet her. I want access to a territory. And what does she sell again? Families. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? That there are witchcraft activities that sell families. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23. is a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? Alright, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women that sow pillows to all armholes, and make what? Handkerchiefs. What version is this? Okay. It's okay. Upon the head of every stature. Hey, let me show you what the Bible is saying. Where's my handkerchief? They sow pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what? To do what? To hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men. They take on a handkerchief, put it on a statue and call your name. It's in your Bible. They have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you. That is a nice word for as long as you just say, God... I'm here and I love you. Everything is alright. Welcome to planet Earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival. They hunt souls. He said, will ye hunt the souls of my people? They are hunting. They are everywhere. Let me tell you. Especially for Africa. Please don't pretend like you are coming from the Caribbean. You were born an African. You belong to an African family. And you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of God will not need to go through this. But for now, we must pay that price. Are you there? Will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? Next verse. Let's look at it quickly. And will ye people, oh, and will ye what? Me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread. To slay what? Read that part. To slay the souls that should not die to slay souls that should not die and to do what to save the souls that are alive the mystery of spiritual exchange that a man will see that his time is here because the wicked shall be cut short and he will say in my place i invoke this and i donate this person die in my stead it was an ancient practice that king used when they were about to kill them, they killed their children. And an indignation rose and the war ended. It's still being practiced today. Men who give others for their lives. I prophesy to you, any man that invokes your name on any altar, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, they will carry their dead body from that altar. I say it again, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that any charm, any altar that invokes your name, to die the death of another. May my God visit them with judgment. Next, next verse. Lord God, behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls, to make them fly. Watch this. Look at the mystery of witchcraft. And I will tear them from your arms. And we let the souls go. Even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. When verse what now? Two verses left. Your handkerchiefs I will also tear. Your instruments of divination. Those, those mediums that you use in covens. That you flip and call the names of people. 
and somebody is walking peacefully on the street. All of a sudden, somebody comes with a knife and kills him. And they say he just died. No, sir. He did not just die. An invocation happening in the realm of the spirit. And deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted. Say amen. amen. And they shall know that I am the Lord your God. Let's read 22. Because, I can't read all those ones. Whom I have not made sad. Listen. And strengthen the hands of the wicked. That you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life. Look at this guys. The summary is that this is a transaction of life and death. Happening in the underworld. Whereas there are human beings moving. You are minding your business. They are discussing business with your life. I prophesy to you again. O oh Lord God of Israel. I speak that anyone under the sound of my voice. That is being manipulated by stargazers. That is being manipulated by necromancers. They who manipulate the constellations. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. May those ovens catch fire. May those ovens tonight catch fire. May those ovens catch fire. Proverbs 1 verse 11. Proverbs 1 verse 11. Shabarato Totopaya. Watch this. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for what? Let us do what? Let us wait for blood. Let us look privately for the innocent without cause. Meaning they did not do anything, but we desire their blood. So we are waiting. Let's wait for the day that they want to take a step. Let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit The whole world lieth in wickedness. If you are yet to be aware, be aware this night. Write the following scriptures down. We may not have time to read them, but this is the lot of the wicked. This is what God will do with wicked people. Okay, let's look at one of them. Micah chapter 5 verse 12. But one other scripture you will write. This is the lot of witchcraft. Psalms 109 verse 17 to 18. Just write that, we won't read it. Let's read Micah chapter 5 verse 12. When the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture, I was amazed. One to read and shout amen after you read it. One to read. He said, I will cut off witchcraft. I will cut it off. Because if I don't cut it off, they will cut short your life. So I will cut it off. Is God helping us? But, I mean, number seven, quickly. There are eight points I'm giving you. Seven. Activating the ministry of angels. The seventh key to long life. Activating the ministry of angels. Hebrews 1.14 Activating the ministry of angels. Angels are real. They are real. I have seen them. I see them all the time. Angels are very, very real. Are they not all ministering spirits? Meaning you cannot see them in the physical. Except God opens your eyes. Or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you. Send forth to do what? To minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation. Are you an heir of salvation? Are you a partaker of salvation? There are angels allocated to you. But they never act until you activate their ministry. They never act until you activate their ministry. Until you activate their ministry. And you activate their ministry in the place of prayer. You activate their ministry through words. You release angels. You release angels. You activate their ministry. Angels are real. And they help believers. We we'll look at a few scriptures. They protect, they preserve, and they contend with wicked spirits. Part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints. Because God knows that alone we cannot make it. 
there is an advantage that wicked spirits have. They have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And so he gave us angels. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. Don't turn there, just write it. Joshua 5, verse 13 to 14. Joshua has an, an encounter with an angel. Project for us. Project for us 2 Kings 19, verse 35. 2 Kings 19 verse 35. While she's doing that, in the book of Daniel chapter 10, when you read from verse 13, the Bible says that Archangel Michael contended with the prince of Persia. He was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy Daniel. But Daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer. When we pray, we activate angels. When we speak, we activate angels. Second Kings, you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men. Read. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred, four score, and five thousand. And when they rose up early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. One angel. Imagine how powerful they are. About 185,000 people killed by one angel in one night when you activate them. Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible tells us that when Satan came to carry the body of Moses Satan wanted to come and carry the body of Moses and Michael the archangel again he came to contend with Satan so angels fight to preserve our bodies they fight to preserve our lives, preserve our bodies, preserve our destinies. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12. Read verse 11. One to read. For he shall give what? His angels charge over thee. Hallelujah. To keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12. And they shall bear thee up on their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Hallelujah. The key to activating them is found in Psalms 103 verse 20. Psalm 103 verse 20. Please begin to prepare the oil. There's, there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly. Very quickly. Quickly, bring the oil for me, please. Don't open it yet. Just bring it. These are the instructions that the Lord gave me. Psalms 103, verse 20. Go ahead and read. One to read. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do what his commandment. How do they walk? Hearkening. They walk at the instance of his word. They walk at the instance of his word. As you pray and declare the word, you activate them. You activate them. You activate them. As you speak God's word, the moment they hearken to the word, they start walking. Until the word is spoken, the angels are not activated. The moment they hearken to the word, they start moving. Hallelujah. These are eight keys that the Lord revealed to me in my place of retreat. And he said, teach my people. These are the keys to long life. These are the keys to long life. You can live long. And the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, according to the mystery of the blood, and the mystery of the oil anoints my people. I don't do foolish things. Give me the oil. I'm not one of those men of God that just does things impulsively. And the Lord gave me an instruction. He said when I was done with that retreat, I should come back. And based on two scriptures the Lord gave me. Isaiah 10, 27. Something will happen in this place tonight. Mande brando su and it shall come to pass 
in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder it shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that haunt your soul unto death it shall come to pass that by a mystery as revealed of the Lord of Sabaoth the avenger of men that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing there are charms that must be broken because of the anointing there are people sentenced to death sentenced to accidents sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil Manda kata paroto supaya. The second scripture. Exodus chapter 12, please. Please, everyone turn there. I sense the anointing of the Spirit very strongly right now. Please turn there. This is the instruction that the Lord gave me. Make sure everyone is participating right now. No matter how far, those following us online, they can get oil if they have access to. Verse 7, please. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it. On the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat he says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel go to verse 12 for i will pass through the land of egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of egypt I will execute vengeance. I am the Lord. This is what the Lord told me in the secret place. He said, I'm arising as a mighty man. The blood of the innocent Christ before me. That's what the Lord told me. And the Lord said, a destroyer is going to move across the nations. And the Lord told me, vengeance. There will be vengeance upon witchcraft. I had the Lord and he revealed this to me. My eyes was open in the spirit. And I saw like a cloud moving across territories. And the Lord told me, by the mystery of preservation, you preserve my people. That's why I'm carrying this oil. It's serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood. Rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her in the set time. Inside and outside, pray. Zakata ta 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 ta. Gran pata pate. Rekete tekete. Rokotos koto pekete. Lekete bros sopatia. Hallelujah. Can we have the plates, please, very quickly? Lift your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it like a believer. In the name of Jesus. Every power of witchcraft manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood, I command judgment upon you. Lift your voice and pray. I shall not die. For me to declare Pray Soto soto tekete Roto shketepa Mato soto lekete Embros koko Seke teke 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 Let's 
in the name of Jesus every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own in the name of Jesus I come against you lift your voice and speak stargazers necromancers those that trade the souls of men they cut short destiny through Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare the seal of the blood over my life, my loved ones, my going out, my coming in. No accident shall take my life. No terrorist shall take my life. No sickness shall take my life. I am secure in Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your loved ones. No death. No death. No death. The destroyer cannot plague my life. The destroyer cannot plague my family. The destroyer cannot plague my death. My going out. You are looking at this olive oil, but this is no ordinary oil. The Lord instructed me to pray through the night over this oil and release the power of preservation that it becomes the mystery of the blood in the spirit. And that's exactly what I've done. And Lord, I lift this in the name of Jesus. I come under this apostolic office in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I declare that over this territory of Saria, over Koinonia, over our families the plague of death will not find expression it will not cut short the lives of people in the name of Jesus Christ Father let this oil lose its earthly significance and take on a heavenly significance in the name of Jesus let the terrestrial become celestial let the earthly become heavenly and Lord let this carry preservation power in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. We're going to do it very orderly and very fast. I pray for this. I will anoint the heads of departments. Um, two of them will go outside. They will just be in front. Your job is to work orderly. I'm sure they will coordinate them. Just take a portion. Put it on your head. And come back and blast in tongues. Begin to blast preservation. Begin to speak and release life to yourself hallelujah go ahead and begin to pray 